The following program is an exclusive presentation of Prime Sports. Last week, a week to forget for the Washington Huskies. Notre Dame, 397 yards on the ground. Brock Heward on his back. Notre Dame 54, Washington 20. Bob Toledo, the new head coach at UCLA. His quarterback, a good one, Cade McNown. His rusher, Skip Hicks, leads the conference. UCLA and Washington, next. When you suffer a disappointing loss, coaches like to say the next week is a must-win game. Well, this afternoon at Husky Stadium on both sidelines, both coaches are saying that. This afternoon, Prime Sports presents Pac-10 football, the UCLA Bruins and the Washington Huskies. All week long, people have been asking Jim Lambright and the Washington Huskies, how do you bounce back from the loss at Notre Dame? Hi, everyone. Rich Waltz, Sonny Six Killer. Well, Sonny, how do you? You go back to basics, Rich. Much like Lou Holtz the previous week, he went back to basics and fundamentals, and that's what the Huskies need to do to get back on track. Yeah, getting back on track for this UCLA team after a disappointing loss to Arizona State. One thing they know after the Arizona State game, they've got a quarterback who can put up big numbers. Cade McNown threw for 395 yards. That's the third best performance in Bruin history. Well, Cade McNown, only a true sophomore, I'll tell you what, it was either Brock Heward or Cade McNown here at Huskyville. The Huskies took Heward, UCLA, happy they got McNown. McNown, when he's not throwing, usually turns around and hands the football to this guy. Three years ago, Skip Hicks was the go-to guy. He hurt his knee. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had two big years. Hicks is back as a junior. Skip Hicks is a big load, much like Corey Dillon, and it tells me that the UCLA offensive line can put up some big holes for him, as you see here at Autzen Stadium against the Ducks. Sonny, this is a highlight that Washington saw a lot of last week, a gold helmet running through a big hole. Of course, he had a Notre Dame jersey on, but you get the idea. This is what happened with 397 Notre Dame yards. This is what it did to the Husky defense numbers. Well, I tell you, it's big time. All of that attributed mainly to the rush, and the Huskies need to stop that today. Another repercussion from the loss at Notre Dame, injuries. One of them at linebacker spot, John Fiala, Washington's leading tackler out. Lester Towns is in. Lester Towns has had big hits on special teams the whole season for the Huskies. He needs to do it today, and Coach Lambright hopes he can respond. All right, we talked about injuries. We talked about John Fiala. That's just the start of the story for Washington. He's at the top of the list of the Washington walking wounded. Fiala is out, along with Mustafa Sobey, Bob Sapp, Jermaine Smith. Then you've got three more guys. This is really going to be tough for Washington. Yes, it is. I think that Ben Catlett's a young sophomore filling in for Bob Sapp at left guard will be one of the keys to watch today's ballgame. It should be a very interesting one. And if you're talking about the Pac-10 Conference and you're talking about bowl games, for both of these teams, it is imperative that they come away with the win. UCLA and Washington from Husky Stadium on a glorious October afternoon at Husky Stadium. Hope you're staying with us. The Huskies and the Bruins coming up next. Husky football on Prime Sports is brought to you by the Pepsi-Cola Company. Nothing else is a Pepsi. By Q-Point Home Mortgage Loans. Whether you're buying or refinancing a home, Q-Point is the intelligent choice. By the new Dodge. See your local Northwest Dodge dealer. And by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Stay cool. This is Northwest Pac-10 College Football on Prime Sports. We play the Northwest. Husky Stadium filled today. Beautiful October afternoon as Washington and UCLA get together. There's your forecast, 53 degrees, but with that 15 mile an hour wind, Sonny, it might get a little chilly here this afternoon. At about uh, 6 o'clock this afternoon, it's going to be a lot cooler. These two teams, of course, have a long history between each other. The Bruins lead it, and it's a very tight one, 27-26 to 2. Last year in Pasadena, Washington had a big day, and Damon Heward had probably his finest day as a Husky. 38-14, Washington won that football game down in the Rose Bowl. 
Well, Coach Lambright's hoping that Brock Hewitt can rebound from the Notre Dame head bashing that he got last week and has all his wits about him today. Yeah, there's Bob Toledo. He, of course, he was the offensive coordinator down at UCLA, took over for Terry Donahue. All Donahue did in his 20 years was just win a bunch of Rose Bowls and bring national acclaim to the program. Toledo takes over a program that hasn't gone much or any place as of late. Jim Lambright and the University of Washington Huskies big loss last week against Notre Dame and I talked about it earlier everyone has asked him how do you bounce back from last week well coach how do you bounce back. Important thing right now is that we learn fundamentally from the Notre Dame loss just as far as techniques and basics uh, controlling the line of scrimmage uh, uh, making sure that we stand a chance against every other opponent because everybody's going to look at this film and form game plans from it so this week we have to become more technique perfect and then go out and prepare our a regular type game plan for UCLA. You know Sonny that's all well and good as far as comparing game plans and one game to another but when you hear that Air Force has defeated Notre Dame today you start comparing scores from other teams to other teams sometimes that stuff just doesn't match up. No it doesn't because any given Saturday that's why I love college football anything can happen uh, you lose on a last second field goal such as Air Force doing in Notre Dame. Today anything can happen. UCLA is a very tough ball club. Huskies uh, need a big win at home. And Washington will get the football first. UCLA won the toss deferred. And the Huskies will get it. Greg Andrasik will kick off. For UCLA. He is not their field goal kicker. That's Bjorn Merton. Jerome Payton two yards deep and we're underway and Payton races to the left side and he's tripped up at about the 14 yard line. And so Washington will put it in play first and 10 Brock Heward who was knocked out literally knocked out of the game against Notre Dame the red shirt freshman out of Puyallup comes in after two weeks where his numbers were not real sterling. The lefty coming in completing just 45 percent of his passes and UCLA was actually off sides on the kick so we'll do it all over again and Mr. Heward will hang loose. There are the numbers I mean 40 of 88 but you look at his last two games just 13 of 44 in his last two games he is looking for big improvement today. Well, I think his last quarter against Notre Dame when he we're not sure exactly when the first uh, big hit on him happened but uh, he did have a horrible second half and you know those numbers aren't indicative of the, that young man's throwing ability. He's a big strong kid who can fire it. Everyone knows at least most Husky fans know about the loss at Notre Dame but the loss that Bob Toledo and UCLA suffered last week can be just as demoralizing. They had Arizona State fourth ranked Arizona State beaten last week and of course Jake Plummer came back to throw some touchdowns and catch a touchdown. And uh, the Sun Devils caught the Bruins right at the wire. The Huskies had that experience last year against Notre Dame and SC. So they've been, gone through that on the other side, just like Bob Toledo. Toledo, a very creative offensive mind, a guy that has been an assistant at some successful programs Texas AM, USC, Oregon, was a head coach at the University of the Pacific, and was an assistant for Terry Donahue. Washington is hoping they can at least return this football further than the 15 yard line which is where Payton ended up. He'll catch this one at the six. Still trying to get to that left side little head fake. Payton gets outside and he could go. Jerome Payton cuts back still on his feet and he's down to the 34 yard line. Payton got outside. And on the cutback he was caught and Washington has great field position at the UCLA 34. They went with the same return that they did when the play was called back to the left side. You see the guys out front throwing blocks. You got Corey Dillon out ahead of him. I tell you 225 pounds he's knocking guys over. Jerome with tremendous speed as we all know with that four or five speed and 
What a great lift for the Husky football program, our football game. From the 34 yard line now, Heward to Dillon. Off the right side, and Dillon is down to the 31. It's a gain of about three yards. We talked about Brock Heward and the offense for Washington, which really sputtered against Notre Dame last week. With all the injuries, uh, this is, I guess, the offense you'll see today. Dillon in the backfield. Sheehy is questionable. George Kiahu at the fullback spot. Jerome Pathon, Dave Janoski, Cam Cleland, the tight end. Ben Cadlitz and Lynn Johnson uh, replacing the injured Bob Sapp and Mustafa Sobi up front. Second down and seven. Dillon slams over the left side. And he stopped at the 25 yard line. This Bruin defense comes in third in the conference against the rush, giving up just 115 yards per game. All told, they are fourth in the conference. Kirsty Ruckham and Smith up front. Linebacking core of Philip Ward, Brian Wilmer, Dan Juan McGee, and Anthony Cobbs. Cobbs is more of a rover, a big uh, safety, a small linebacker. On the corners, Gidry and Gidry. That's right, McCullough and Williams are the safeties. On the handoff, Dillon. He's got the first down on third and short. And Bill McCullough up from his strong safety spot to make the stop. One thing the UCLA likes to do, Rich, is they'll move people around. You mentioned they have that rover position that comes up as a backer when they do some shifting. You see him right off the tail of the linebacker over there on the UCLA side. Block Huskies have gone with a double tight end formation, and they're just going straight at him. We'll see a lot of two tight ends set from Washington. Cam Kissel is in right now. And that's Kissel in motion. Dillon squirts through, but is tripped up at the 16. That's a four yard pickup off the first down play. Anthony Cobbs, that rover back, made the stop for UCLA. Anthony Cobbs was actually blocked on that play, too, Rich, as you'll see here on the left hand side. Cam Kissel, number 11. Getting a piece of him, but he's able to knock Kissel's leg back in and trip him up. That's one area that the Bruins feel they've really improved themselves from last year, and that's defensively. As I mentioned, fourth overall in the conference. On second and six, Heward to the air. Coleman, he's to the two. That's Eddie Coleman with the catch. Paul Gidry on the coverage. The tackle by Coleman, Paul a little bit Gidry. Creepy. He's Here's one of the walking Gidry. wounded for Washington. Two Bruins go out on this play with slight injuries, but this is a nice confidence booster for Brock Heward. Nice little slant in from Freddie Coleman. Last week, we'd have loved to have seen Freddie Coleman hang on to a few of those little slant routes. Good look right here. Janoski in motion going to the flat. Fred Coleman lined up on the outside, coming onto the inside, right in the seam. Beautiful pass. Well, there is Paul Gidry, and that, that the news gets worse for UCLA because Anthony Cobbs, their starting rover back, has been helped off the field as well. He is hobbling big time. It's hard to see exactly how that happened, but uh, with Gidry, it must have caught a knee. Our helmet on the knee. You look at this UCLA football team, and they do come in with a record of two and three. But you look at their three losses. Their three losses are to top six teams. Their first loss of the season at Tennessee, when Tennessee was number two, they lost by 15. Then they lost on the road to number six Michigan, and then last week a loss to number four Arizona State, 42 to 34. There's Paul Gidry, and he does not look. He kind of looks like uh, Brock Hewitt did play last week in South Bend. First down, goal to goal for the Husky. Here you at the good look at it right there. Yeah, he looked like his teammate kind of popped him as he came over the top. Yep. That'd be a big loss for the Bruins. Uh, Paul Gidry, a big return man. Yeah, Anthony Colbert is the other corner, and he'll probably come in. But it's a goal line situation now. Dylan behind Kiaho. Corey Dillon. Did he get in? Not sure. Touchdown, Washington. A delayed reaction. 
Dylan didn't really slam through. He just sort of slithered in. That was Corey Dillon is good at that though. He's 225 pounds of slither right here. He is right there. You can see he's clearly over the goal line. But that's what the Huskies wanted to do, Rich, come out and control the line of scrimmage with the run. And so Dillon is into the end zone for the fifth time this season. John Wales on for the extra point. And off the 60 yard kickoff return by Jerome Pathon. Washington goes 34 yards for the touchdown. Huskies on top of UCLA 7 nothing. He's making a big difference early on. Washington on top of UCLA 7 to nothing. Not necessarily the Pathon return, certainly that's big of 60 yards, Sonny. But the penalty by UCLA offsides on the original kickoff. That sets up this 34 yard six play scoring drive. Corey Dillon two yards out, of course. It was Brock Heward to Fred Coleman down to the two, and then Dillon took it in. But Bob Toledo can't be real happy with his special teams. Offside on the opening kickoff, there's really no excuse for that. No, there shouldn't be. It's much like a defensive lineman jumping off sides. When you, all you got to do is look at the football and see it being snapped. Guys are just anxious. It's the opening kickoff. They need a big win on the road. They've been on the road before with big losses, so they're all geared up, ready to go, and uh, Huskies benefited from it. Keith Brown, Jim McElroy back for UCLA. Not a good kick. It will be taken by one of the short men. And they'll bring him back out to the 28 yard line. Cade McNown, West Lynn, Oregon. And you might think, oh, he's a Northwest kid. How did he get away? Yes, he was a Northwest kid, and his numbers are very impressive. But he was actually raised in Monterey, California, moved to West Lynn, Oregon, outside of Portland, for his senior year in high school. Sophomore, left hander, very mobile and very dangerous. 395 yards in the air against Arizona State. His pass is almost picked off by Lester Towns. Lester Towns getting the start in place of John Fiala. Almost with an interception. Here's the Bruin offense. Skip Hicks, of course, the leading rusher in the conference. Ayers, McElroy, the wideouts. Jamal Clark, a big target at tight end. Offensive line, which is really very young. No seniors. Overhauser and Souter are juniors. Stuart Myers, the sophomores, and Chris Ferris at left tackle is a freshman. This is Skip Hicks. He's out to the 30 yard line. Chris Campbell making the stop. A lot of pressure on this Washington defense. Campbell, Richie, Tuiaea to stop the run. You can see Towns along with Jensen, Aliaga, and Chorak up front. Roberts Parrish, Mel Miller, and Nigel Burton. Jermaine Smith, of course, out with an injury. So Burton is in that starting spot as a corner. And Kyle Roberts moves into the starting spot at linebacker. McMahon on the move, and he unloads. It's almost intentional grounding. Jason Chorak there forcing the incompletion. Big play right there, but I'll tell you what, Ike Aliaga on the blitz, you'll see him coming from the right-hand side, taking the inside route, and Jason Chorak going outside. No running back there to pick him up. One thing the Bruins do with McNown to buy him time, they like to roll him out, lots of bootleg. But if you've got speed on the outside, like a Jason Chorak, it can be tough to accomplish that. The Chris Saylor punt, Payton will let it roll, and it's a good one. Boy, what a punt by Chris Saylor. It will end at about the five yard line. And with that 15 mile an hour wind, an extra little push down to the five. 65 yard punt for UCLA and Chris Saylor. Coming up on Prime Sports, we hope. 
You'll join us for Husky Profile following the game. We'll take you in and around University of Washington Athletics. That's Husky Profile coming up after the ball game. Take a look at that nationally ranked volleyball team. So off the 65 yard punt, Heward and company with 95 yards of real estate in front of him. And Corey Dillon behind him. He'll get the football. Slams ahead to about the 12. Brian Wilmer made the original hit. And it's a six yard pickup. Brian Wilmer on the start. Here's a look at Philip Ward, one of the starting linebackers. He lost his lid. Watch Ward, 97. A lot of action again, two tight ends in here. Wilmer making contact, but not being able to drag Corey Dillon down. Philip Ward. Big boy. Yep. Second down and short. Cam Kissel. His block springs Dillon. Out to the 22 yard line. Andy Colbert made the stop for UCLA. One thing to watch is one man we talked about in the pregame was Ben Catlett's number 70 filling in for Bob Sapp just coming around doing a little trap action up in the hole. Those two guys you can see Lynn Johnson on your left along with Cadlitz. There's a look at Cadlitz. Cadlitz had an opportunity to play a lot against Notre Dame last week and Lynn Johnson has been a guy that's been used all over the offensive line. Flags go down as does Dillon at the 27. This might be going against UCLA. Well they've got people jumping all over the place. We saw three different UCLA Bruins moving forward enticing the offensive line of the Huskies to jump. These guys will move around, Rich. They, they like to do that stuff. Defense offside, five yards, first and five. Not Bill, that, however. <laughs> Bill Richardson, our referee. I think Jim Lambright would like to throw the football maybe 18 to 20 times at the most today. He would like to run the football and run it a lot. And to accomplish that, one thing Washington wanted to do is get off to the lead and they have it seven to nothing set up on that 60 yard kickoff return by Jerome Pathon Mike Reed in motion. Hewitt with a quick drop for Pathon in a crowd makes the catch Andy Colbert catches Pathon but not before Jerome has the first down. And going back to Notre Dame it was interesting listening to some of the national media talk about Washington. And one thing that stood out was Jerome Pathon. They said, boy, Washington certainly has an explosive wide receiver. And it took me a moment to stop and think, well, who are they talking? Oh, yeah, it's Pathon. Sometimes you take him for granted. But I think he's really starting to emerge not only here in Seattle, but also on the national scene. First and ten from the 35. Janoski in motion. This is Reed, and he's smothered at the 36 after a hard-earned two yards. Well, Rashawn Sheedy not being able to play today, Rich. Mike Reed's going to get a few carries today. Give Corey Dillon a nice breather in there. Getting a little room now to roam, starting out on their own five. Here's a look at Dillon. Reed in the backfield on second and eight. Quick pump, Pathon trying to get to the sideline. It's a wobbler, and Jerome can't get back. The ball deflected, I believe, and Heward ended up on his back. Travis Kirschke in there to get a piece of Brock Heward. To deflect the ball from Heward, you have to get in there and get up because at six foot five, he's a big target as a quarterback. Yes, he is. But one thing about that fake, Brock Heward really did an over dramatic fake on the throw. And Jerome Payton, they were playing a zone, and there's no way he had an opportunity to get beyond the DB. Look at Brock sell this thing. Whoa! 
Overselling it. Got him low. Just threw off his hand a little bit. Yeah, the, the ball wasn't deflected. I don't know if someone got a piece of his arm or if it was just a poor throw. Hewer going to go down. And it's Kirschke that got him. Third sack of the season for Travis Kirschke. And it will be fourth down. Washington will have to kick. There's a UCLA defensive front that does not have a whole lot of sacks. Just 13 in five games. <laughs> Jeff Prince will punt it away. Javelin Gidry with a fair catch at the 39 yard line. We are underway in Seattle. The Washington Huskies with a 7 0 lead over UCLA on a gorgeous October afternoon. We'll be back after this from Pepsi. 7 0 Washington on top of UCLA. 7 17 left in the first. Bruins with the football. Skip Hicks trying to get around the right side, and Chorak catches him. Back at the 37 yard line. Jason Chorak. Eight sacks, 11 tackles for a loss, and that'll go as another one. Excellent play. He's over there with Chad Overhauser, the big guy from UCLA. Jamal Clark, the tight end. Look at the left side of the screen. You see a reach block. Andy Meyer, 78, trying to get outside as well. Leaving a hole and Jason took it. McNown, little swing pass, and it's Craig Willendy, a sophomore fullback. Willendy is out to about the 44 yard line. Nigel Burton made the stop. Craig really hasn't been that productive this year, Rich. I mean, he's only had three receptions prior to that one in the whole season. Total yardage early on. UCLA with just six. Huskies have only 51, but remember, Payton's 60-yard kickoff return set up the first scoring drive. Nigel Burton at the corner spot today with Jermaine Smith banged up. Man in motion is Todd McBride. Skip Hicks out of the backfield, stays in bounds and gets the first down. That's a nice move by a veteran. Skip Hicks and I use that term because Skip Hicks exploded on the scene three years ago it was just an outstanding running back for UCLA blew his knee out in a long jumping accident and while Abdul Jabbar came in and had two productive years Hicks is back as a junior you, Hicks is back and I tell you Nigel Burton is not going to win that battle head on like that with Skip Hicks six foot two fifteen is Hicks out of Wichita Falls Texas. He had 175 yards against Oregon. That was in Eugene, 114 yards last week against Arizona State, against a very good Arizona State defense, I might add. McNown inside handoff, Hicks in Husky territory to about the 47 yard line. Kyle Roberts made the stop. This is an inside handoff, as you mentioned, a little counter action right here. I don't know why anybody would be sold on Craig Willendy trying to get the ball. He's only carried six times, but Skip Hicks right there doing a little power football for two yards. Bruins with a full house look in the backfield with two tight ends. McBride in motion. McNown in trouble. Incomplete. And McNown paid for it. Lester Towns sent him on his backside. That's one thing you got to do, counteract when they do these little rollouts, as you mentioned earlier. You got to attack him. Don't just sit back and let him get a, a, a rid of the football right there. Lester all over him. Fortunately for the Huskies, he was out of bounds for any. Couldn't pick up any positive yardage, but Lester can move, Rich. He's a big guy, but he can run. You can see that Washington is very much aware of what UCLA likes to do with McNair. He has been unable to roll out comfortably yet, and there he goes down. No fumble. He was down before he coughed it up. Kyle Roberts there to pick it up. But it will go as a. I guess it won't go as a sack. 
But McNown goes down. Watch his center, Sean Stewart's feet. Yep. Normally when that happens, you can look at your old buddy, the center. <laughs> and that's not necessarily the center's fault, is it? No, it is not. It's pressure from that Husky defense. Sailor's last punt did just that. 65 yards worth. Payton is deep. Fair catch right at the 10 yard line. And so Washington backed up to their own end zone again as both defenses start to flex their muscles. Washington and UCLA a few minutes left in this first quarter. Seven nothing Washington on top. No clouds to chase away today although they may get some wet stuff later on tonight. Rich Walt sunny six killer high above Husky Stadium. Washington scored the first time they had the football. But Brock Hewitt and the Huskies backed up to their own 10 yard line. Two very good punts by Chris Saylor of UCLA. Cam Kissel in motion. And Dillon spilled off his feet. Travis Kirschke made the stop. It's a three yard pickup. We will see a lot of Corey Dillon. He set the Washington record, what, with 36 carries earlier this year. I'll bet you he breaks it today. I bet he does too. At least Jim Lambright hopes that he can have an opportunity to break that. Of course, Lambright wanting to establish that run against these guys, and uh, you know they move around so much. Rich, it's, uh, everybody has man blocking, zone blocking. You see a lot of zone blocking. Bruins move, flags go down, and Dylan has another carry. This one across the 15. Travis Kursky again made the stop. Offsides against UCLA. This Bruin defense looks familiar. You can see Jeff Ruckman, the nose tackle, defense. jumping. Offside. Repeat Rocky second Long, down after who a five-yard penalty. was the defensive coordinator at Oregon State for five years. He is the brand new defensive coordinator for UCLA. So Bob Toledo, when he took over for Terry Donahue, changed a lot of things. Brought in a new offensive coordinator with Al Borges. Rocky Long, his new defensive coordinator. Second down and short. Dillon does not have the first down. He's short of it. Good hit by Abdul McCullough coming up from his linebacker spot. Dan Juan McGee there as well. Corey's trying to zone blocking up front. You'll see him looking at the offensive blocking scheme here. You see Owen Kurtz right there. But he Corey tried to cut back right there. He thought he saw a little bit of a hole. But right there you see the big guy Dan Juan McGee throwing in coming from his outside linebacking position. I love that name Dan Juan. He's a junior out of Long Beach. It's a very young UCLA team. Not a lot of seniors on it. Dylan with that spin move spun away from Jeff Ruckman and picked up the first down and Ruckman is upset. He thought he had the tackle. Yes he did but I tell you Corey Dillon has been using that spin move the whole season. A lot of times he's gained a lot of big yards off that. Get a look at it right here. See Lynn Johnson 57 filling in for Mustafa Sopi today doing an excellent job against Philip Ward allowing Corey to get some room. Ruckman a junior Damon Smith up front a sophomore. Dylan again over the left side. Ruckman, McGee, and Wilmer there to make the stop. One thing that the fans should look at is the offensive line for the Huskies. One thing when you go back to basics and fundamentals is you go back to that line play. Right now, the Huskies are just pushing downfield against UCLA and eating up a lot of clock in the meantime. There's that offensive line. Lynn Johnson, Ben Cadlitz joining Tony Coates, Olin Krutz, and Benji Olson. Here comes a blitz. Heward escapes. He'll keep it and pay the price. Losing about four yards. 
Wilmer and Sean Williams in pursuit got it. Sean Williams 32 he is going to be in on a lot of tackles see the blitz coming right there from the outside. One thing I noticed about you against Tennessee and against Michigan those guys will fly and they can get to the ball in a hurry great pursuit. Not the greatest of decisions by Heward. Because Williams was there and contained and he easily went right through Janowski. To get to Heward. Third down now. And a long eight. Janowski in motion. Here comes the blitz again. Little swing pass to Dillon. Can he get outside? Cuts in. Has the first down. And more. Dillon to the 40. He's down to the 36 yard line. Sean Williams made the stop. So far this season, Corey Dillon's had 10 receptions for a little over 100 yards. Tell you what, you get a few of these plays in his hands. Great blocking. Tony Coates right there, riding the man completely out of bounds. Good cutback. One thing about Corey, after he catches that football, obviously we know that he can run with it. Powerful. He held on for dear life. John Williams caught him. Nice block oh, by Janoski. Oh, Dave Janoski. Great hit. It's not often that a wide receiver gets a hit like that. Although Mike Reed is pounded pretty good <laughs> as he spins into Dan Juan McGee. Those are the plays in the film room. Uh, now the video room you turn back and back and back. You keep watching those big blocks. Corey Dillon that'll help uh, Brock Heward's averages a little bit. 40 yard pickup on the reception. Don't let this quarter run out Rich. And Washington will hold on to this 7 0 lead. Jim Lambright and the Huskies will head to the second quarter on the move with a 7 0 lead. They're starting to hit pretty good here at Husky Stadium. Washington 7, UCLA nothing. You're watching Northwest Pac 10 College Football on Prime Sports, where your teams come to play. Welcome back Rich Walt Sunny Six Killer Washington 7 UCLA nothing as we start the second quarter Washington on the move at the UCLA 35 second and nine Hewer to Coleman it's broken up incomplete Andy Colbert made the play cutting in front of Fred Coleman and Coleman just trying to prevent an interception. All right, numbers. UCLA just 12 total yards in the first quarter. A far cry from last week when Notre Dame ran up 650 yards in four quarters. And of those 101 yards, the man standing behind Brock Heward, Corey Dillon, has about 90 of them. Heward, here comes a blitz. They get it to Dillon again. Nice catch. Nice cut. He's to the 20. First down, Washington. Brian Wilmer made the stop. Boy, you called it right, Rich. That was a. Brock Hewitt had to get rid of the ball earlier than he wanted to. Corey Dillon with great hands. Both he and Rashawn Sheehy, the other starter who's not playing today, both can catch the football. But right here, great catch. One hand to bring it back. Downfield, you're going to look at some good block, good cutback. But Benji Olsen, 76 out there, giving him some help. This guy is just a natural. Four of six, 75 yards, very efficient. That's what Jim Lambright had in mind for today. Dylan over the left side, cuts back inside the 15, gain of six. Wilmer and McGee made the stop. And that's the sequence that Jim Lambright is hoping for. Corey Dillon, four yards. Corey Dillon, five yards. Throw him a safe pass. Get the ball in his hands, basically, is what we're saying. I need some shades. Dylan over the right side. This time, however, only about two yards. Travis Kirschke, the stop for the Bruins. 
Kersky will make a lot of tackles out there. Brian Wilmer, 53, also the linebacker. Somebody told me that the UCLA defense, obviously from Rocky Long, the Oregon State scheme, is a great scheme, but now Rocky Long has better athletes to run that scheme. 58 yards and 13 carries. And he's got about 60 yards in receiving yards as well. Timeout Washington will break as well. The Huskies on the move and on top. Almost ski season. Gorgeous afternoon for football here in the Northwest. Washington 7, UCLA nothing. We're just underway in the second quarter. Full house on hand. And Washington in UCLA territory. Down to the Bruin 13. Third down and three. The Huskies have eaten a lot of clock. Janoski in motion. Cured with time for the tight end Cleveland. He's got it. And Cam Cleveland is down to the two yard line. Sonny, all the carnage and negative stuff that came out of the Notre Dame game. Jim Lambright said this man right there Cam Cleland had his best game ever as a Husky. I don't doubt that at all. Cam Cleland has had a very good year but catching the football on some key catches as we saw against Notre Dame in traffic again right here being able to stick his hands out for a tight end that big with those big pads on that's really tough to do. But Cam Cleland also is an excellent blocker. Abdul McCullough made the stop. A three tight end set with Jeremy Brigham, Cam Kissel, and Cleveland. Kiaho right side did not get it in. That was first and goal. Almost a mix up there. Boy, and after watching the end of the Wisconsin Northwestern game, no handoff is a given. No. Things get a little tighter down here in the goal line. Everybody wants to get that additional push. Hasn't really handed off in a game situation with Diego as he has it with Mike Reed and Corey Dillon and Rashawn Shooting. I would think Dillon's number is in order here. Call the four play. He hits. He gets it in. Touchdown. He hesitated at the goal line, and so did I, and he sort of stumbled in. I was waiting for him to go up and over like he did against Notre Dame. But just getting in is good enough. And Washington has two touchdowns on the board. Watch the push straight ahead. That's why George Kieho is in the ballgame, number 25. Absolutely knocked Philip Ward backward. Corey Dillon will give uh, George a big thank you for that block. Is up and good. And so the Huskies make it a 14 to nothing football game. Here's another look at the scoring play. Watch the block coming up 25. George Kieho right there on Philip Ward, allowing Big Corey to get into the end zone. That is a great block by a running back. Nothing. Washington on top of UCLA. An impressive drive. Speaking of impressive, the Washington volleyball team is having a tremendous year. You can see them next Saturday as they take on the Stanford Cardinals. Stanford and Washington. Saturday morning, 9:30. The Cardinal, the defending Pac-10 champion, always a national power. And Washington has them at home. It's here next Saturday at 9:30 on Prime Sports. Interesting, Rich. Manu Asasopo's daughter, volleyball, U Dub, give the big speech, I think, last night to the UCLA Bruins at their hotel. Not his daughter, but well, Manu. Manu did. did. <laughs> Although I'm sure his daughter would give a, a pretty oh. inspirational one. Uh -oh. Keith Brown with some daylight, and Brown is out to the 38 yard line. So Keith Brown brings it out. The Bruins really haven't had great field position so far. And 
Washington has done a nice job of keeping Cade McNown with lots of purple in front of him. Good, good look right here. This looked like it was going to go all the way right here, but closed quickly. Alex Hollowell in there to make sure that he can go any further. And now UCLA will try to move the football. Fumble, Fumble Skip Hicks lost it. It's scooped up. This is Tony Parrish, and Parrish is out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Hicks couldn't find the handle, and Parrish was there to pick it up. He had a 45 yard touchdown on an interception against Arizona, and he was 11 yards from a score here against UCLA. Watch it there, pulling at the top of the screen. Andy Myers, Skip Hicks just losing the football on his little own. Jason Torek there to wrap him up. But Tony Parrish being in the right spot, right time. Had it not been for Cade McNown making a great play here, he'd have had his big TD there. Good scoop. Tony Parrish, good hands. Jason Chorak causing the fumble. And you're right, McNown had to make the big play. And so Washington was right on the doorstep again. The Huskies can get a first down or a touchdown if Dylan gets in. Is he in? Yes, touchdown. Corey Dillon gets in. Barely. As he tight roped the right side and just snuck in around the pylon. There was no denying Corey Dillon on this play. Great blocking right there at the point of attack at the end of the line of scrimmage, but there was no chance. Andy Colbert, number 10, give him a little shove. There's Husky mascot there. Ten yard run, Dillon with three touchdowns today, seven on the season. Wales with a kick, it's good. 21 nothing. Washington on top, big. In the blink of an eye, Washington has a 21 0 lead over UCLA. And John Wales will kick. Short kick and a short return. And Washington on the special teams having a pretty good afternoon. UCLA now, their offense, Sonny, has gone nowhere. 15 yards all told with 11 and a half minutes left in the first half. Doing it with a lot of pressure that really have controlled Cade McNown, not letting him get outside. And a lot of that also is good coverage on the wideouts with Mel Miller and uh, Nigel Burton. Cade McNown changing things up. He'll put it in the air to the sidelines. He gets out of bounds. In Caliaga in hot pursuit. McNown, 6'1, 207 pounds. He had a nightmare of an afternoon last year against Washington. Seven of 18 and three interceptions. Yeah, last year I believe they used four UCLA quarterbacks against the Huskies. Here, Kate McNown. Very nimble on his feet. We've already seen quarterbacks very nimble on their feet. Jake Plumber and Keith Smith from the Arizona schools. This is Darrell Price, and he was just introduced to Jason Chorak. I'll tell you, Jason Chorak. 69 for the Bruins. Chad Overhauser thought to, well, believed is their best lineman right there. Jason just right through it. That's unbelievable. Great play right here. Good charge. Went through two blockers. Jason's fired up today, Rich. Well, either that play was not designed to go inside. Or Chorak with a superhuman effort. Would suspect it's a little of both. McNown with time to the sidelines. Intercepted. Kyle Roberts. Another UCLA turnover.
Cade McNown, I believe, made a bad decision here. Not only does he float the ball outside in the double coverage where Kyle Roberts is dropping back, his tight end and was wide open in the middle. That's a long throw. You got to float it up there like that. It gives a DB, Kyle Roberts in this case, enough time to filter back and help out on the pattern. Excellent play by Kyle Roberts. Washington turned the last turnover into seven points. Of course, that was at the 11-yard line. They've got 42 yards to go with this one. Dylan and Kershke collide. Two-yard pickup. The Huskies will now pound the ball like they have in the first quarter. And five minutes into this quarter. Boy, that last drive, Sonny, not the one after the turnover. You can see Dylan 72 yards on the ground, 54 in receiving. The 89 yard drive that made it 14 0, Dylan's second score, seven minutes and 19 seconds on that drive. Little screen, Dylan. And down he goes. A couple of birds in to get him. Michael Wiley, a freshman linebacker, made that play. He was tripped up by Michael. Well, sometimes you go to the well too much. It's the third time the Huskies have run that play in the first half. These guys are smart kids. UCLA reading it right there, 54. You see, look at Brock Heward's eyes all the way. He never took his eyes off Brock's eyes. He knew where the ball was going, and Corey Dillon. Although still, he just barely tripped him up. Gerald Harris has checked into the football game for Washington. Along with Coleman and Janoski, or rather Payton and Janoski. It's Heward with time. Diving catch, Jerome Payton. At the 27-yard line, first down Washington. That was a nimble piece of quarterbacking because I'm not sure that Payton was the number one receiver. Well, you look at Damon's head right here, kind of tells you where he's going. Overthrowing Janoski, Jerome Payton making the great grab. It's hard to tell from that angle. He asked Brock Hewitt to say, hey, I'm throwing Jerome Payton. <laughs> <laughs> Six of nine, 98 yards. All three Washington touchdowns. Corey Dillon on the ground. And he'll carry this one to the 24-yard line. Smith made the stop. We have some new people on the UCLA defensive side. Damon Smith and Wiley. They're getting a pretty good push on Lynn Johnson that last time to break. Just messed the play up a little bit before he could get his feet underneath. Well, remember on that first drive, the Bruins had a couple shaken up. Anthony Cobbs and Paul Gidry. Kissel in motion. Dylan bounces outside inside the 15. He's got the first down. When you compare Corey Dillon with Rashad Sheehy, people say, well, Sheehy's the explosive one. And you sometimes get the picture that Dylan is this plotting tailback. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> he is explosive as well. He has got all the moves right there. Very gifted natural runner. And combined with all that speed and size, I tell you, it makes it very tough on defensive backs and linebackers. Wilmer just barely catching up to him. First down and 10 at the UCLA 14 yard line. The Huskies have rolled up 11. The Bruins have not moved the football. Flags go down. Play is stopped. Movement on the interior. Make contact down there. Dead ball. Unusual looking at the Bruins, especially Coach Bob Toledo right Offside. there. Was Terry Donahue Defense. always had that powder blue first down. little crew neck. Yeah, even in the coldest of climbs, or the hottest. I mean, Aloha Bowl, he'd have that sweater on. Coach Lambright's got to be feeling pretty happy about the way this team has come out and responded. You know, Toledo is a lot like Lambright in a sense that he was a longtime assistant for a lot of guys. Lambright, of course, was here at 
helped Washington his entire career. But Toledo has been an assistant. He's worked under a lot of great head coaches. And he's finally getting his chance. Dylan poised down to the five yard line. Four yard pickup. Michael Wiley at the bottom of the pile. Shows you a lot of respect. Mike Wiley there helping Corey Dillon up. Normally you don't see a lot of linebackers helping the opposing running back up. Second down from the five, and it is second down and one. Dillon still on his feet. Into the end zone. Touchdown. His fourth of the ball game. It has been the Corey Dillon show thus far in Seattle. This is really all Corey Dillon right here. A lot of the blocking has been stalled, stalled right there. Although you see Jeremy Brigham, I believe, out there making a good block on the end. But Corey Dillon, fourth time, sneaking in there. The extra point is good. Five-yard touchdown run. And so Washington has taken two UCLA turnovers and turned them into 14 points. There, there's a good look at Catlett, but Jeremy Brigham right there. A little bit of jersey, but not too much. Big block helping Corey Dillon into the end zone. The Kyle Roberts interception of Cade McNown gave Washington the football at the 42 yard line. And from that point, it, it's a lot of what Washington has done all day long. Get the football to Corey Dillon. Seven plays covering those 42 yards. 320 on the drive. Four scores for Dillon. Well, it's one thing also on the special team. You look at the our turnover ratio. The Huskies had not produced a lot of points off turnovers coming into this ball game. That's a nice look to see the fumble, getting the score, the interception, getting the score. 28 nothing. Four score and 100 yards ago. Corey Dillon. Came in with just four touchdowns on the season. He has eight now. A fair catch at the 16 yard line. Well, that's unique. <laughs> Boy, everything going wrong for the Bruins right now. Cheyenne Caldwell made the fair catch. Caldwell was not going to run with the football and have the possibility of a turnover. Boy, the Bruins special teams, aside from their punter, Chris Saylor, have struggled. And you can see Bob Toledo is lecturing his upman. I mean, I guess that's better than having your upman fumble the football. Well, it's better also if you look at the Husky side of the ball. The only time they've kicked it deep, they've had a big return. McNown and company from the 18. Keith Brown. Out to the 23 yard line. Third tailback to touch the football for UCLA. Skip Hicks started the game, leading rusher in the conference at 100 yards per game. Fumble. Darrell Price and now Keith Brown. Keith Brown can move the football, though. He's got a lot of speed. You can see right there, just good blocking right there. 69. Chad Overhauser, their big leader on the offensive line. Brown again, Lester Towns finished off by Mel Miller. It's the way you want those middle linebackers to fill. Lester Towns being 240 pounds, powerful hitter, filling in right there, stopping the ball carrier. You see him coming from the left side, or excuse me, the right side. John Fiala, the leading tackler for Washington, out after having his knee scoped. He's out for a couple of weeks. Towns may be a little more reckless abandoned, maybe a little more speed for that linebacking quartet. Although Fiala's a guy you hate to lose. Oh, yeah, McNown yeah. still has it. He's going deep. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Todd McBride. 
And a well disguised play fake by Cade McNown. I'll tell you, that was a beautiful, beautiful play fake. Hiding the ball behind his back. McBride just not being able to catch up to the football. Watch this right here. All those young quarterbacks looking at Lee Sullivan. Hey, where, where's that running back? Beautiful job by Cade McNown. Oh, just off the fingertips. But I tell you, that was a great fake. Saylor has had some immense punch today. This one a low line drive. Which will die at the 37 yard line. That's where Washington will put it in play with 548 left. In this first half. Washington in a big way. 28 nothing. Twenty eight nothing Washington on top of UCLA five forty eight left in this second quarter they're talking about the game of the year in the Big Sky Conference. We've got it right here on Prime Sports for you Northern Arizona the Lumberjacks against the Montana Grizzlies Saturday at eleven thirty. We talk about comparing scores with Notre Dame and Air Force beating Notre Dame. Montana beat Oregon State handily to start the season. Oregon State beat Stanford today. Now does that mean Montana <laughs> would beat Stanford. They, it's possible. Yeah. Corey Dillon out to the thirty nine yard line. Dillon has had a busy afternoon. One hundred and eighty four yards and I would expect that Dylan has accounted for about 125 of those at least on the ground and as a receiver. Kissel in motion. Hewitt on a quick pop. Has his man. And Payton is out to the 49 yard line. Anthony Cobbs made the stop. That's the quick type of pass that Hewitt has been effective on this afternoon. Yes, he has been, and it's great. It's a great confidence builder. And you have guys like Jerome Payton. Once you get him the football, as you see at the end of this play, he's able to swivel, put his hand down, and possibly go all the way. Great, great concentration right there. First and ten, ball just short of midfield. This is Mike Reed who is lining up in the tailback spot. Certainly the loss of Rashawn Sheehy is a tough one. Made less or so by the fact that you've got a Corey Dillon. But remember even when one guy they were both here they were at least giving the other guy a rest. And that's one thing that Dillon is missing is, is that every few series missing a couple of plays just to catch his breath and Reed is kind of playing that role today. Well Mike Reed normally plays fullback but he is only 215 pounds six feet so he's like built like a tailback. Janowski in motion Reed up the gut. And he's short of the first down to the 43 Travis Kirschke to stop for UCLA the clock continues to roll. One of the things that uh, as a Husky fan uh, as I hear and as we've noticed Mike Reed hadn't been getting the ball very much from the fullback position as we'd seen in the spring and coming into the fall camp. So it's really good to see that Mike Reed is getting a few handoffs here adding a little bit more experience to the role. Well I was wrong I said at least I did say at least 125 but I undershot I don't think I make the showcase round with that Dylan has 149 of those total yards. That play goes nowhere on third down and short. And Washington will have to do something they've only done once today. Punt the football unless as the fans here want them to they go for it. But with three minutes left in the first half and a 28 nothing lead. I don't think Jim Lambright wants any big momentum swings right now. No, he doesn't. And, you know, I, said, I think the other thing to look at too, Rich, the opposing coach. Okay, you're down 28 zip, and the other team's going for it on fourth and two and a half or three. Jeff Prince, the punter. Oh, they're doing a the fake. But he did not get off the launching pad. 
like uh, maybe Jesse Binkley, 16, he had jumped a little bit. Jim Lambright not real happy. They snapped it while the kiss off. You see the left side up there. It's hard to tell from that view, but look at 16 right there. You Marcus know, Marcus Harrison, number six. The hard part about that, Sonny, is you practice those plays every week in practice, and you only bring them out once or twice a season. And to not be able to at least run it and see if it's successful, that it's got to be frustrating. Although you got a 28 nothing lead, still, when you run those things, you want to at least get them off the ground. Good punt. And excellent oh. coverage by Washington. Brendan Jones again, Rich. On the special teams, Jones batted it back in. And UCLA will have 95 yards to go as this first half comes to a close. Brendan Jones is on special teams. On this one, he's able to knock it back. And we have seen earlier in the season great <laughs> effort. <laughs> Run that and reverse it, it'd be a great reception. <laughs> well, that's one way to get yourself playing time is to shine on the special teams, and Brendan Jones has been able to do that this year. McNown to the air. McElroy with a catch at the 11 yard line. Mel Miller made the stop. Mel close quick on that one. Mel Miller, 25. A seven yard pickup. Boy Miller limping around. Washington is already without Jermaine Smith. McNown over the middle, in and out of the hands of Dan Farmer, the freshman. And it was a good pass and, and a good pattern because if Farmer holds on, Sonny, he's still running. Oh, absolutely. That's a beautiful throw by Cade McNown. Just splitting the seam out here, the soft spot in that prevent type defense. A little bit low, but Dan Farmer, that great volleyball player that he is, knocked it down. That was a kill, wasn't it? More like a dig. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're the California guy. McNown. Nice catch on the sidelines. I think it was McElroy with Tony Parrish on the coverage. You get the sense that UCLA is just looking for something to hang their hat on, some positive play to get this offense in gear. Well, one guy that can do it is Cade McNown going into the locker room with a little bit of confidence here. David Ritchie was in pursuit, just couldn't catch him. This is a great throw on a run. When you're running that hard and throwing in the same direction, it's tough. UCLA out to the 27. There's a minute 42 left as McNown goes into the shotgun. Flags go down. A little screen. Darrell Price. Looked like Ink Aliaga was a little uh, aggressive on the play. Jumped into the neutral area. Right there, 54. He coming on the blitz just got there a little bit too soon. But at the end of this play, watch number eight, Nigel Burton. Ward off the blockers and go out Defense. and make the play. He's in the neutral you, zone, offside, big, but he is first a and five. Guy. Nigel Burton, 5'9", 180, slipping behind those blockers and coming in with a good play. First and five now. Washington, a 28-0 lead. McNown steps up and sacked. <laughs> Denied. Chris Campbell, that would be a stuff, I think. <laughs> that was great. You don't normally see a sack quite like that. You just push the guy down. Chris hasn't had that many sacks coming into the ball game. Good pressure here. Looked like a little bit of a hole there in David Richard. But that one way to do it. McNown over the middle. He's got his tight end. Jamal Clark close to the first down. It will stop the clock as they move the chains. Although McNown is going to burn a timeout. The Bruins 
It's their first of the first half. It's a good play, good time to call a timeout with a minute to go before halftime. Now they can discuss what's going to happen here. Two plays in a row. We'll see if they can get something positive out of it, at least a field goal. Positive stuff has been hard to come by by UCLA. Here's a last look two plays ago at Washington's pressure on Kate McNown. Chris Campbell. Not your prototypical sack. <laughs> Great. Kate is dangerous at any time. Uh, Fortunately for the Huskies, taking advantage of two big turnovers to get 14 points up on the board. Five for 11, 45 yards, good interception led to a Husky touchdown. But it, Rich, they don't even have 50 yards in total offense. Yet. 49 yards for UCLA. But now likes rolling out, and especially to that left side in Washington. Has really stacked that left side and, and almost made it impossible for him to get out there and do what he does best. First and ten. UCLA at their own 39 yard line. Now going for the shotgun. With time deep, deflected and incomplete. Tony Parrish with a nice play. Alex Hollowell on the coverage. McElroy was the intended receiver. That's a tough play, I think, for a quarterback to complete. First of all, he's in the shotgun. He can see where the safety is, but the route was set up to be a 25-yard post pattern, allowing Tony Parrish time to get over and knock it away. If you're going to run those post patterns, normally in that type of coverage, you got to do it within 10 to 20 yards. A little too deep, allowing Tony to get there. Good play. Second down and ten. McNown going deep. Overthrows Todd McBride. Nigel Burton on the coverage. Would have been a tough catch over there anyway, Richard. Looking right back at where the sun is setting. I can almost bet you Todd McBride didn't even see the football. You know, the Bruins who were moving the football all of a sudden, the last two downs have gone for the home run. Yeah, well, it's time's running out. They only had less a minute when they started this series, or the last two plays, anyway. Inside screen, McElroy, and he's caught by David Ritchie, and it will bring up fourth down. And the Bruins, I would suspect, are going to have to punt. And they will. They bring their punt team on. They thought about it. Bob Toledo, though, aware that if he goes for it and doesn't get it, Washington is a few plays away from a field goal. Faithon is deep. It's a 60 yard kickoff return, but this one return will go for about 12 yards. And the first half is in the books. And an impressive one for those wearing purple. Four touchdowns for that man, Corey Dillon. And Washington is on top of UCLA 28 0. Halftime, Washington 28, UCLA nothing. And a very impressive first half it was for Washington. Rich Waltz, Sonny Six Killer. Wow, lots of Corey Dillon. And I think if Jim Lambright could draw up a perfect first half, this would be it. Well, it's that fundamentals we, a game we were talking about. Go back to basics, and Corey Dillon, that running attack, is a great way to do it. All right, ha halftime highlights. Washington was on top 14 to nothing. We pick up the story from there. That's when the defense came into play, and they did it by forcing a fumble from Skip Hicks, the leading ball carrier in the Pac-10 Conference. Not even forced, Skip Hicks losing the football. Opportunistic, here he comes. Tony Perry, seven, scooping it up, almost getting in the end zone, had it not been for Cade McNown, the quarterback, saving the run. And from that point, it's what we saw a lot of, and that's Corey Dillon. This was his third touchdown on 11-yard run. Corey Dillon was not going to be denied on this play. Andy Colbert, no way he was gonna stop Corey from getting in the end zone. 
21 0 Washington at that point. Cade McNown and the Bruins tried to go upstairs to get back into this football game, but when they did, they found Kyle Roberts waiting for him. Kyle Roberts dropping back in coverage, coming up and with a big, big interception. And the Huskies did what they did a lot of in the first half kept it on the ground, ran some clock. Dylan finished it from five yards out. Yes, he did. Young guys up front blocking Ben Cadlitz, Jeremy Brigham, 84, making sure Corey Dillon can get into the end zone. Four touchdowns for Dillon in the first half. Washington dominated the first half of this football game. But one more half remains. The Huskies in control, 28-0 over UCLA. Opening kickoff, second half. McElroy, five yards deep, down to one knee. And that's something we didn't touch upon, Sonny. Special teams played a big part of that first half for Washington. Yes, they did. It's good to see this kickoff from Wales. Actually, not with the wind. The wind's kind of swirling right now down in the Husky field, but uh, great kickoff to start the second half. Numbers very impressive for Washington on the scoreboard at 28 to nothing, and you would expect so as well at the halftime stats. That's it. Rushing yards. Big advantage. But look at the time of possession also, Rich. 20 minutes, almost 21 to 9. Cade McNown going right to the air. It's deflected and incomplete. You can see that the Bruins want to get that young man untracked right away. That is true. Look like big Mac 78. Mac Chuiaia. 6-6 probably got a hand up there. It's hard to tell from that play, but he was running around like he did something, so he must have done it. Second down and 10. 54 yards of total offense for UCLA in the first half. McNown going to swing it out. Keith Brown still on his feet. Flag goes down. That'll probably be a face mask on Lester Towns. Towns playing in place of the injured John Fiala enjoyed a very good first half. Lester Towns did get out there in time for possession. See the way he settled down right there, forcing the running back to go one way or the other. Unfortunately for Lester, got to keep his hands down on the waist. Boy, a 15 yard penalty as well. It looked more like the five yard variety, but anytime you get a face mask, you're really gambling. And Despite the penalty, though, Rich, he did what he's supposed to do. He was in position to make the play. He didn't overcommit to let the running back have his way. The Bruins have got to find a way to get the ball to their skilled people in the open field if they have any hopes of coming back. And they find their big tight end, Mike Grebe, with a catch at the 38 yard line. Tony Parrish made the stop. Grebe, a sophomore, with his ninth catch of the season. Both tight ends for UCLA did not having a big year last year. This season, however, under the new offense under Bob Toledo, between them, they're making quite a few grabs. There's a big reason right there. Big target downfield. And the Bruins, for the first time all day long, consistently moving the football. On the opening drive of the second half, little option look. McNown will keep it, and he'll go down. Jerry Jensen made the stop. A hard-earned four yards. Those big major penalties. It's a good look at Jerry. Little option action here. Those penalties just really helped this ruin offense. Jerry Jensen, great pursuit right down the line. Little play action. McNown likes to roll that way. It's caught to the 14-yard line. Jamal Clark. And the Bruins are doing a nice job of executing their offense. Good play action play. Jamal Clark was a big target. We talked about the other tight end, Greed, but Clark is even bigger. Little play action right here. He looked like Mac Tiaia in the right being held as he's trying to get in pursuit of the quarterback, which threw him off. Although it was a good play. Tony Parrish right there trying to go up and knock it down. 
Nice throw by McNown. You can see how dangerous he is, Sonny, when they let him roll out. He throws very well on the run. Little pitch. It's Keith Brown. He's down to the 18-yard line. Or check it down to the 13-yard line. It's a gain of a yard. David Ritchie made the stop. Time for the the dub defense to step it up a little bit. They're moving around it's, it's twice now. We've seen this little option. Not a very good toss. Keith Brown's lucky to hang on to the, to the football. Lester, don't be coming in there too late. He did that against ASU this year for a 15 big one. McNown goes down. Chorak and Aliaga. Chorak with his ninth sack of the season that leads the Pac-10 conference. Great penetration here, bringing Ink also on the play. Everything's on the left side of the screen. Do a lot of play action in this type of offense, but Chorak, you got to be careful when you're going to play out to his side of the field. Third down and 13. The Bruins, if they can get it inside the five, will pick up a first down. From the Husky 18. Flag goes down. Play is dead. Play, play, down. play clock had expired. Whether there was movement before it, I guess that's the question. Delay game against the offense. Five yards. Still third There's your down. answer. Yeah, it's uh, flags back there with the back judge, Rich. He's up staring at the west end of the stadium. Kate had to change the play. He saw something he didn't like with. The Huskies had three people on the line of scrimmage. Looked like a blitz was coming. Gets tough down in the red zone. Third down and 18 for Bob Toledo. And the UCLA Bruins. Shotgun. McNown with lots of time. To the corner. Got a man. It's a first down Bruins. That is complete. Jim McElroy with the Jim catch. McElroy. Out of bounds at the, at the two. two. And Cade McNown starting to shine on a cold afternoon in Seattle. We got Alex Hollowell in there on coverage. Beautiful throw right here. He absolutely had Hollowell turned around. You might be able to see it there. There he is coming back to the play. McElroy making the reception. We saw Mel Miller get a little dinged on his leg early at the end toward the end of the first half. Keith Brown hit at the two and stopped Keith by a bunch Brown of purple. The ball carrier. Lester Towns, I think, the first to knock him in there. Kyle no Roberts game. was there as well. And Big Mac. Lester Mac. Towns, Tony Parrish, and Kyle Roberts on the stop. UCLA opening drive. Second down, goal to goal. The Second ball just half. Just inside the Husky two. A four-minute drive, which has brought them to the Washington two-yard line. Brown in the backfield. McNown to the corner and it's incomplete and boy did he pay for it. Kyle Roberts planted Cade McNown back at about the 15 yard line. I'll tell you, on this type of play, you're going to play action a little bit right here. Fake play action, not really selling it very much, but Kyle Roberts coming in on the blitz from the safety position. No time. Third down, goal to goal. Third down and goal. He's like any other quarterback, Rich. You get, you get on him, he's not going to be very accurate. Option, McNown. No. Short. Fourth and inches. And UCLA, no doubt, is going to go for it. David Ritchie made the stop. McNown was just short as he stretched for it. Even by David, David Richards' the standards, Kid McNown's 215 pounds right there, hanging on for dear life to keep him out of there. Well, that was close. That was real close. Three tight ends in the football game for UCLA. Brown behind Willendi. McNown, quarterback sneak. He's in. Touchdown, UCLA. Boy, that... Quick snap and McNown beat everybody up over the pile. He really got up in a hurry. 
Normally you like to have a linebacker coming up there give him a little kiss as he crosses the line. That time Cade McNown getting it over before any contact is made. Justin so Jerry Jensen gave it a little bit. Yeah, he, the kiss arrived but just a little bit. Yeah. You got to get him before he crosses the line. Bjorn Merton trying to add the point. And he does. And the Bruins, impressively, go 80 yards on 12 plays. Cade McNown and Bob Toledo. The Bruins aren't dead yet. They're on the board. 28-7, Washington on top of UCLA. Jason Harris. Out across midfield. Actually, it was Joe Jarzinka. So Joe Jarzinka out to the 47 yard line, a 38 yard return for Jarzinka. Tried to squib it down there, Rich, not letting Corey Dillon or the, one of the deep backs get a nice look at it. Jarzinka getting a good bounce to pick up. <laughs> You'd love to watch his effort. You know, Jarzinka was taken off the return team to start the football game. Jerome Pathon was took his place. Pathon had a big 60 yard return to help set up Washington's first score and Jarzenka with a nice effort of 35 yards. And so Washington's first possession is actually in UCLA territory. Corey Dillon who had 21 carries in the first half down to about the 44 yard line. It's a gain of three. UCLA had 80 yards on that drive. They had just 54 total in the first half. Had a big third down play. Cade McNown delivering the ball to his favorite receiver, McElroy, and also that big penalty, Lester Towns with the face mask. Bruins show blitz. And Dylan breaks loose to the 29 yard line. Abdul McCullough caught it. Another 15 yard pickup. Watch the offensive line here just straight away. Whoever's in my area blocking, Benji Olson, 76. Olin Kurtz downfield. It's tough for Abdul McCullough. He's got his one thumb wrapped up in a big cast. Former linebacker, now safety. That's a great look. You know, one thing I heard about the fans that went back to Notre Dame is they were able to watch their scheme. This is an excellent, it's fun to watch it from the end zone. Dylan in motion this time. Cured with a quick look. Janoski pays the price, but holds on to the football. And of seven. Cured has had a very efficient football game. Anthony Cobbs made the stop. Called some pass plays that'll make him look very good. For the Huskies, nice possession type under 10 yard routes. We've seen that one a couple of times today. 6-5 sure gives you an advantage when you stand up and throw the ball in the short little middle zones. Well, Janowski's still feeling the effects of that hit. Cam Kissel in motion. Second and three. Dylan again spins away. And short of the first down. Spun right into Dan Juan McGee. Yard pickup, third down and about two now for Washington. Not yet. I think that's carry number 24 on the draft. Seven and a half minutes left. Third down and two. There's Dan Watt with you. Dylan again inside the 15. First down, Washington. Boy, Corey Dillon with 25 carries now is having a whale of a day, but give credit to his offensive line. It's a, a patchwork offensive line with Lynn Johnson up front. Well, actually, an instinctive move right there, Andy Colbert. Yeah, you can't coach that. Corey Dillon right at the right time making the cutback. Lynn Johnson up front with Ben Cadlitz, Tony Coates, Olin Krutz, Benji Olson. 
121 yards today. He'll add more on this carry inside the 10. Down to the 9. Dylan left. Dylan left. Every now and then Dylan right, but they really are going over that left side. They really are. And one thing about the offensive line, those guys, Nick Lynn Johnson talked about it. He's played guard center in all those positions. You know, a lot of people, it's not easy to come in. Things are a little bit different. The calls are different. The scheme is different. But the advantage today, because of the type of defense that UCLA is playing, you're able to go straight ahead pretty much. You block whoever's in your area. Yeah, they've run right over Tony Coates and Ben Cadlitz the last two times. Bruins stack it up, so they go right, and Dylan is inside the five, and he's got another first down. You could see UCLA stacking up on that left side. Yes, they were. And Washington ran right away from it. He is one short of the modern day record by Hugh McElhaney at five. Chuck Carroll went off for six back in 28. And who can forget Irvin Daly's seven touchdown effort back in 1919? I think some of those band members they uh, honored at halftime may remember that. Johnson with a false start. And they'll back it up. Trying to get a little start. Get to Travis Kersky before he's ready. There may not be any time left in this third quarter by the time this drive is done. I mean, UCLA's opening drive was a long one. And now Washington is eating up a bunch of clock as well. Time of possession in that first half. Washington over 20 minutes. UCLA just over nine minutes. 525 left in the third. Janoski's in motion. Hewitt in trouble. He's hit as he throws. And it's incomplete. Five down interference. Andy Colbert and Jerome Payton. An easy flag to throw simply because the ball was so underthrown as Heward was hit as he threw. It really was. It's hard to throw when your body's moving three yards backwards, but poor old Andy Colbert just got caught up into it. Jerome Payton trying to get back to the ball. Anthony Cobbs made the hit on Brock Heward. Two yard line now, first and goal for Washington. And is this going to be number five for Corey Dillon? Bruins stacking up the middle. Dillon stopped at the one. Damon Smith made the stop. Look at this right here, 53. Brian Wilmer just shooting through the gap right there. Everybody's trying to find their little lane to get in there and stop the running attack of the Huskies. One thing about this too, Rich, is they didn't get in, but it's still second and goal, and it's, the clock just keeps running here in the third. That's what the interference penalty in the end zone means. Dylan again. He is in, I think. The touchdown, Washington, number five. And Washington answers UCLA score. Just power football at the goal line, Rich. Olin Krutz, George Kiejo again, as we saw earlier in the ball game, leading him up through the hole. George with that muscular short. Frame. John Wales to add the point. A five and a half minute drive as the kick is no good. And the first special teams mishap for the Huskies. It was Janowski's kickoff return that set up a 47 yard drive, which ended with Corey Dillon's fifth touchdown.
It's a cold winter day, but the snow is not here. That was or used to be a Bruin, which is pretty much in ruin. Sonny, you have an outfit like that in your closet? Well, I, I know I have a teddy bear. I don't know about that outfit. 34 7. Joe Jarzenka's kickoff return setting up that 47 yard touchdown drive. John Wales getting set to kick it off. Four and a half minutes left in this third quarter, and there have only been two possessions UCLA's long 80 yard drive, and then Washington's drive. to his 19 yard line. Well the Bruins are in a pretty large hole right now Sonny 34 to 7 but they did move the football the last time they touched it. One thing the Huskies don't need to do is help them out with penalties which really helped them out but I tell you Cade McNown he's not going to give up he's going to try and move that ball down the field. The young man is very talented as we've talked about but Bob Toledo hey let's make something happen something that we can stay within our frame of our offense. Got a man wide open. Craig Willendy, the fullback. And he's into or almost into Husky territory. He's out of bounds at the 49 yard line. Willendy, the sophomore fullback, a 30 yard pickup. I like this UCLA offense in the second half. Well, they have moved it around. You knew that they would do that. Craig Willendy, however, is not the guy that we really thought of. Ink Aliaga, a little slow getting out in coverage on Willendy. The second big reception of the day. This is Ryan Rock. And he'll go nowhere. Nick Aliaga made the stop. The fourth different tailback that the Bruins have used today. They have used quite a few throughout the first part of this season. That one had no chance of being successful. McNown to the sideline. Ooh, threw it behind his receiver. And I don't think Eric Scott even saw the football. He made the cut. It wasn't, I mean, it, it was behind the receiver, but had Scott seen it and stopped, he would have made the reception. Still, most quarterbacks are taught to throw the ball to the sideline. Right here, you can see that maybe it just got away from him a little bit. Yeah, I don't think Scott saw the football no, until it was too late. But again, Alex Hollowell in coverage had a few problems last week at Notre Dame. Today he's having a little bit of problems staying close to his receiver. Third down. McNown. Jensen got it. Back to the 43 yard line. Husky's not holding back the day. This play, Jerry Jensen getting in on it, coming from his weak linebacker position, just absolutely beating the guard, Andy Myers. Myers had no chance. Chris Saylor with another good punt. Hayden makes a lunging oh, fair catch oh, oh, oh. at the 22 yard line. And Washington in control will get the football for the second time here in the second oh, half. Cade McNown and the UCLA Bruins having trouble getting things going. 34 7 Washington. 34 7, under three minutes left. Third quarter, Washington on top of UCLA. Next Saturday, the live Pac 10 game of the week, USC and Washington State. Saturday night, 7 15, the Trojans and the Cougs right here on Prime Sports. 
Dillon. To the 31 yard line. Andy Colbert made the stop. Freddie. Great first down play when you can pick up seven yards. Here we are rushing yards 133. It's a lot easier to call plays up the stairs for Coach Scott Linehan to pick up seven. Camp Kissel in motion. Heward rolling, going to go deep. Hathen couldn't hold the ball. <laughs> Roughing the passer, I believe. Flag down back at the 22-yard line. Javelin Gidry on the coverage. Watch the play. Brock Heward right there. Big hit. McGee hitting him a little bit late, but not that late. But Jerome Payton roughing a passer him get in the air against the defense. 15 yards, first down. 15 yards on the roughing the passer. Last week, Jerome Payton with that tremendous catch to keep a drive alive against Notre Dame, allowing them to go in and score. Again, coming up with a great effort. Look at that. See? One inch. I was just off by an inch. I'd have had it. Three catches, 31 yards in the first half for Paytha. And a big 60 yard kickoff return to start the football game. That kind of set the tone for things. Dylan goes down. Philip Ward made the stop. Dan Juan McGee was there as well. You can tell that Dan Juan McGee was going to definitely be in and play in some way after that penalty. Getting to Brock Hewitt a little late. Looks all fired up there. He's a big guy, almost 250 pounds. Called his number quite a few times ago. Junior out of Long Beach. This UCLA defense. Very good one this year. They have played some incredible opponents on the road. Heward deep, and he underthrows Payton, who made a break just as Heward released the football. Andy Colbert on the coverage. Second down and about 11. Becomes third down and about 11, and Kate McDowell wants to get the football back. Huskies opting to throw the ball here a couple times in a row. Six for eight on third down conversions today. Wonder how many of those Corey Dillon has been involved in. A bunch, both as a ball carrier and a pass receiver. Dillon had 53 yards in receiving in the first half. Minute 15 left, third quarter. You were the time. Payton. Oh, he dropped that one. And a flag goes down. It might be against Payton. He might have pushed before he tried to make the catch. Create a little separation between he and the defender. He's got that guilty look on his face, <laughs> doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> You know, some guys will shake their head and say, no way, not me. <laughs> yep, you got me. Yeah. Oh, well. Probably get a good look at it right here. See if we can see his right arm go out. Well, I guess he did give him a little shove. He was busy shoving. That's why he wasn't ready Pass for the ball. Occurs. Against it was a the good offense, throw by Brock the penalty is declined. Bruins it's will probably decline down. it. They do. They would rather have the football than another third down. Good pocket for Brock to throw the football out of. And not a bad throw. Oh, no. Well, when you hit him right there, it's a beautiful throw. Nick Taronis will punt. Sounds like a song. Yeah, one good thing. And then Nick Taronis. A 
and Mike Taronis down to about the 11 yard line. It didn't look pretty, <laughs> but on the stat sheet, <laughs> looked like the, the old halfback quick kick. 46 yards on the punt for Nick Taronis. We've seen Jeff Prince, Taronis, Amit Sarshar. <laughs> Tried to kick it in over him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> From the 11 now, UCLA trailing 34-7. In and out of the hands. Derek Ayers. Nigel Burton on the coverage. Nigel Burton has done a tremendous job today. I think he was in great position that time on Derek Ayers. Played well at safety last week versus Notre Dame. Today, been able to control the receivers from UCLA. A look at Burton, who's moved up to that corner spot with Jermaine Smith injured. Bruins facing second down and ten. McNown with time has his man. Dan Farmer. Now, actually, it's McBride, Todd McBride, at the 20-yard line. He is short of the first down, however. Third down and about one. There's McBride. It's a young receiving core. Farmer, a freshman, McBride, a sophomore. Their whole team actually is fairly young. Their offense, we talked about their line. And they had just two seniors in their starting 11 on offense. McNown gets rid of it to Skip Hicks, and he goes down. Tony Parrish caught him. Great play by Tony Parrish. From the onset of that play, Rich, it looked like he had a lot of room to roam. Tony Parrish taking off the angle. A big play to end the third quarter. The Bruins stopped in their own territory. Washington 34, UCLA 7. Back for the fourth after this. Start of the fourth, UCLA will punt 34 7. Washington on top. A busy man today, Jerome Payton. Standing at his 44 yard line. Chris Saylor. They've gone all the way back to his 29 yard line. But a good head of steam and some daylight. Payton. He has been marvelous today. To the 33 yard line. His Kickoff return to open the football game. Gave Washington the start they wanted. Beautiful moves on this run. You'll notice Jerome Payton doesn't hesitate too much right here. He gets up right through the gap. Very lucky for UCLA. Somebody's been able to hog time down there. That's a big play. 52 yard punt, 38 yard return. Third quarter stats. Total yardage and UCLA did most of that damage in the third quarter on one drive. It was an 80 yard drive. Shane Fortney at quarterback right now. Corey Dillon to the 28 yard line. Dan Juan McGee made the stop. So Fortney is in right now. He still has a very tender right knee. Must plan on handing off quite a bit here in the fourth quarter. Certainly don't want to take a risk of Shane Fortney rolling out or having to scramble with that weak knee. Fortney has had a pretty good year, and it was tough to watch him last week against Notre Dame with a bad wheel have to come in after Brock Heward was knocked out of the game. Dylan off the right side spins into a bunch of ruins, gains maybe two. Got a couple new offensive linemen in there, at least one. Aaron Dalen at right tackle now. 75. 
There he is. There's a look at Dalen alongside Benji Olson. This is still a valuable experience for guys like that in a game such as this if it maintains itself. Forney going to put it up for Gerald Harris, and it's incomplete. Good job of coverage by Andy Colbert. Washington will get an opportunity to kick a field goal. They may just go for it right now. And it to number four. Fourth down and four. Fourth down. Four to four on fourth and four. They thought into the game. Jim Lambright. And his Huskies trying to go to four and two and three and one in the conference. They get ready for a huge game next weekend in Eugene against Oregon. Janowski in motion. Here comes a blitz. Fortney goes down. Anthony Cobb got him. Cobb's coming from that linebacker spot. And Fortney is slow to get up. It's hard for me to believe with all the talk about trying not to get him in the ball game and letting an Anthony Cobbs come in and sack you. You see him coming from the top of the screen there. Untouched. Nobody saw him. And so the Bruins take over now. Boy, and Fortney is, is not moving real well to the bench. Back on offense, UCLA. Greg, Gabe Cretion, the freshman, made the catch. Cretion, now fresh, that's the third different tight end for the Bruins to catch a pass. They have a whole stable full of talented guys. They're all young, except and for Jamal Clark, who's the senior starter in tight end. Greve is a sophomore, Cretion, a freshman. Got Tyrone Pierce as well, he's a junior. In motion is McBride. McNown trying to hit McBride, incomplete. And now it's second down. Trying to get it to McBride so he has some room to run. If he got it to him or been completed, he had room to run down the sideline. These guys have worked hard today. The offensive line, Benji Olson, Tony Coates, Ben Catlett's number 70 has done a remarkable job today filling in for Bob Sapp at left guard. No, we haven't changed. McNown on second and 10 from the 43. And a nice throw, Jim McElroy, the catch, and McElroy fights his way. Down to the 24 yard line. Lester Towns in pursuit made the stop. 19 yard pickup. Mel Miller in there in coverage. Getting turned around a little bit. Very nice route by McElroy. See that Mel Miller's right leg is all bandaged up. He had it ice for the whole third quarter. 66 yards on five catches for McElroy. When McNown has time, he's very accurate. Not much time there, but he makes a completion on a tumbling catch by Craig Wallendi. His third catch of the day, Wallendi's been a nice receiver out of the backfield. Yes, he has. That was great pressure that time by the Huskies, and Ink Aliaga almost coming up with the interception, but Wallendi in position to make the grab right there. The Kaika Malloy. Fifteen of twenty-eight. Here comes the blitz. McNown with time. Flag goes down. Incomplete. Looking for McElroy again, and it was Mel Miller on the coverage. And it looks like holding against UCLA. Well, it looked like Cade McNown had a couple other people open downfield. Skip Hicks and Todd McBride, but it wouldn't matter anyway. Holding, it all going to come back. There we see Brock Heward going to go back in the ballgame. 
Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spotted a foul, second down. That's really tough from the spot of the foul, Rich. Ten yards turns into 18 yard penalty. And second down turns into second down and 29. Washington shows blitz and they're all coming and McNabb tries to get away from Lester. He does and overthrows his receiver. Boy, Nigel Burton and Lester Towns were really coming from the right side. McNown got away as quickly as he could. I tell you, Lester Towns covers a lot of ground for a linebacker. You see him coming on the blitz right here, chasing Cade McNown out of the pocket, knocking him on the ground right there. And also, by the time the play, the ball hit the ground, Lester Towns was another 10, 15 yards downfield. Third down and 29. McNown. Hold down. No flags. To the end zone. Got a man flagged down. Interference Washington. Alex Hollowell got tied up. Todd McBride, the intended receiver. I don't know how they could miss the holding call down there against Jason Chorak. Might get a look at it on the right side of the screen. Actually, it wasn't Jason. It was Suki Wig, 67. I think Hollowell figured he was beat. Oh, he stumbled, and then he held on to McBride. Giving the Bruins new life here. Although McBride probably should have had the ball anyways. It bounced off his hands. Hollowell on the sideline. Alex has had a tough couple weeks. It is a 15 yard penalty, but it's also an automatic first down. So the Bruins convert the third down and 29. In strange fashion. Airs in motion. McNown avoids Jensen. Gets hit as he throws. And it's incomplete. Boy, Cade McNown. Was just hammered by Kaika Malloy, who was coming on a blitz. Watch the first one, though. Jerry Jensen, we've seen this a few times this year by the Huskies, in position to make the sack. Cade McNown with his athletic ability avoiding it. But a Kaika Malloy, as Husky fans know, is a big hitter. And Cade McNown defense now knows was he's a big hitter. Five yards, repeat first down. Ouch. <laughs> but. Washington was offsides and it will cost them five yards and so it's now a first down and five fourth quarter 11 minutes left UCLA down but on the move. In traffic it's caught. McElroy. Beautiful throw by Cade McNown and McElroy to come up with the grab. Mekaika Malloy was back in coverage, as were two other Huskies. Came up with a big catch. Cade really rifled this one in there. Three step drop, boom. That's the way you're taught. It's just like a linebacker falling back in coverage, you throw to his inside shoulder, just like Cade did there. Comes up with a big catch. Sends airs in motion. McNown to the air again, has his man, and down to the three yard line. Dan Farmer, another young receiver for UCLA, just a freshman. Nigel Burton made the stop. They like to spread that ball around. Boy, I'll bet the Bruins wish they had that first half back. They dug themselves a 28 0 hole. And they've kind of played straight up here in the second half. First and goal, Skip Hicks into the breach. Nigel Burton made the stop. A lot of second teamers out there for the Husky defense. Skip Hicks not having the day he's been having so far in the year. Six rushes, seven yards. Second and goal for UCLA. Burton and 
Parrish on the stop. Breathe in motion. Hicks again. This time he's in. Touchdown UCLA. And the Bruins are on the board again. There's 9.43 left in this football game. And UCLA might just, well, they're going to kick it. The Huskies have helped the Bruins along the day on the scoreboard. Both drives, major penalties, have helped the Bruins. Bjorn Merton. The extra point is good. Bruins are moving the football, but they've still got a long ways to go. 34 14, Washington. Four fourteen, Washington on top of UCLA. Obviously, with 9:43 left in the football game, onside kick is not just a possibility, but a reality. And there it is. And UCLA does a nice job. It's still loose, and the Bruins might just have it. down about eight pounds. Washington says they have it, and they do. The Huskies recover the onside kick. A real scare. That had a great bounce in it, just like you wanted. That's the way you draw it up for the onside kick. Tut right there. He almost gets to it. Boy, UCLA touched it first. Yes, they did. You can do that if it goes 10 yards and you get there first. Well, what do you know, Rich? We've got Brock Hewitt back in the game. Brock Hewitt is Shane Fortney. Who the Washington coaches indicated they did not want to play unless they had to. Goes one series. Mike Reed with the carry. And Reed busts it down to the 43 yard line. 11 yard pickup by Mike Reed. Corey Dillon, we were watching him on the sideline. Had an ice pack on what looked like his right shoulder. And so we don't have an injury report on Dylan, but it looks like he's done for the afternoon. Yeah, so he is over with. His shoulder pads are down. He's got the ice on there. He's going to let Mike Reed, especially after that last run, leave him in there. Hewitt gives to Reed. And down he goes on first and ten. Brian Wilmer on the stop. So second down and nine. Well, the health of the Huskies was a big topic this week. Bob Sapp, Mustafa Sobe, John Fiala, Jermaine Smith all out. Jim Lambright. Plug that offensive line. Then Johnson. Then Cadlitz. And Stewart looks for Reed. It's incomplete. Nigel Burton did a nice job stepping up in the defensive backfield. And obviously Corey Dillon with a big afternoon in Rashawn Sheehy's place. Although even a healthy Sheehy at this point in time, so you'd still probably see. Corey Dillon and she possibly splitting time. That's true. Uh, Rashawn Sheehy there next to Coach Bill Dietrich, number one. Still keeping his head in the ball game, finding out what the plays are being called. Sheehy and Dillon, of course, both juniors. Heward going to go deep. Just throw from Heward, who took a real pop and is still down. And is just getting up. 
Travis Kirsty really did lower the boom on Brock Hewitt. But Brock Hewitt did what he's down. supposed to do. He drops back, he steps up, he knows he's going to get pounded, but and delivers the, the football and a perfect strike. Freddie Coleman, guys starting, he comes up with great catches. Beautiful grab. Took a little page from Jerome Payton today, Rich. Travis Kirsky with the hit on Heward. I think it's more where he landed. Yeah, it, it, it looked like Kirsky kind of tripped over Heward on the way down. And at 279, you don't want that guy landing on you. Reed, right side, touchdown, Washington. And for the first time all day, it's not Corey Dillon who gets into the end zone. Corey wishes he was out there, though. He'd love to go for the big number six on the day. Mike Reed from a yard out. All the Huskies congratulating themselves there, and they should for great blocking up there. Cam Kissel, number 11. Kieho again. Big George Kieho, number 25. John Wales will kick. Coach Lambright can probably breathe a little easier. Well, though he doesn't look like it. Yeah, it. <laughs> Still has a very concerned look on his face, and he should with an extra point try here from Wales. He was missed one. High snap. Fortney is on the hold, and the kick is good. Kick is good. So Washington puts this one out of reach. 7.47 left. Mike Reed from two yards out. Forty-one fourteen. Seven four seven left. In the fourth, Washington comfortably on top of UCLA. Bruins finally pick it up. Boy, UCLA, McElroy finally fell on it. UCLA has had a world of trouble with those short kickoffs from Washington. The Bruins have a long ways to come back in this one. 41 to 14, Washington on top. Speaking of comebacks, that's a part of our Q Point Mortgage Husky history. Brought to you by Q Point Home Mortgage Loans. Whether you're buying or refinancing a home, Q point is the intelligent choice. Kerry Conklin to Mario Bailey. Back to 89. What was Washington behind in this one? 27 to nothing. Greg Lewis with a 20 yard touchdown run. And Washington completed the comeback and beat the Bruins down in Pasadena. 28 27 was the final. Of course, we could not in our archives find the 19th. 70 matchup. Steve Buck has come on to take over for UCLA. In 1970, Washington and UCLA. And Tommy Prothro threw his hat on the field. I'll never forget it. You know, his hammered are pretty good. That's why he did that, right? He does pretty good the year before. Steve Buck, incomplete. Eric Scott, the intended receiver. Well, I guess we could, at, at this point, look towards next week for both of these clubs. First for UCLA. They have to head up north of uh, Los Angeles to the Bay Area to take on the Cal Bears, who currently are ranked 19th in the nation. And of course, Washington will head south to face the University of Oregon in Eugene. Buck took too much time. That will be an interesting ball game. I know, Sonny, you'll be there next week in Eugene, the Huskies and the Ducks. It has been a tough one for the Huskies the last two years. Oregon winning on some last second victories. It's never easy to play down in Autzen Stadium. Those guys are all fired up. The fans are fired up. Big rivalry. Goes back to the old days when they used to play it in Portland. And 
and uh, those used to be the fun times I hear from the older Huskies. You didn't hear that from the older Ducks? Nope. Steve Buck. <laughs> Hit by his own man and then finished off by Chorak, who will gladly pick up his second sack of the day and his tenth of the season. Pinball. Pinball wizard down there. Steve Buck was bouncing off everybody. Yeah. Gene Waters, who actually is a senior out of Walla Walla, I think is the guy that hit it. Oh, I take that back. It wasn't Waters. It was Darren McClure. Jason Chorak was there originally, initially, excuse me, on Mr. Buck. I think McClure will get half a sack and he'll share it with Chorak. <laughs> Buck with time going deep and <laughs> right through the arms of his intended receiver, Derek Ayers. That's not a bad pass. No, it's a beautiful throw, and Nigel Burton, I think, got away with a little uh, touching downfield. But at least he was in position to make a play. Right here, a little, little body touch <laughs> went right through his arms. Pathon is deep for this punt from Chris Saylor. Get away from it. And that's what Washington does. It's down by UCLA at the 31 yard line. Six minutes left in this football game. Washington on top of UCLA, 41 14. Starting to get a little chilly in Husky Stadium. Washington 41, UCLA 14. Six minutes left in this football game. The big W Alumni Club from the fourth through the ninth is involved in the blanket drive for St. Vincent de Paul in East Sleep Country USA or Thriftway. November 9th, Oregon State against the University of Washington Huskies. So if you can bring a blanket down to any Sleep Country USA or Thriftway locations, November 9th, Oregon State against the Huskies. Heward to Reed, and he spins to the 35-yard line. A gain of three, and Washington right now is interested in just one thing. Actually, two things, really. Holding on to the football and running some clock. Have a few young people in there, Rick, so that's uh, going to be a difficult task. This stage of the ball game, though, if you don't want anybody else to get hurt, do some conservative play calling. You want Brock Hewitt to be in a situation with Shane Fortney in that damaged knee or hampered knee. Reed with a nice move to escape the first tackle. And he's out to the 37 yard line. Third down and about five. Well, the Huskies certainly have to take satisfaction in this ball game after getting hammered in South Bend. And a, a football game that not only was a, a wipeout on the scoreboard, but also in the trenches as well. But they've rebounded nicely. And they're four and a half minutes away from taking the W here. Heward saw the, the play clock down to one and that's why he takes the timeout. And he'll head to the sideline as will we. Four and a half left in this one. Washington on top of UCLA. 41 14 Jason Chorak with a couple sacks today four and a half left third down for Washington Hewer going up top Gerald Harris with a catch nicely done flag down interference against UCLA Harris with his first grab of the day 
the freshman out of Kent has a very bright future called offensive pass interference. Oh really. A little shove off right there to get himself free create that little separation. Pass interference against the offense 15 yards from the previous spot still third down. My mistake still a nice grab. And a nice throw. And I suppose a nice call. Bob Toledo agrees with that. It'll back things up. Not an easy task that this man has. I mean, stepping in for a guy that really was a, a, a legend and Terry Donahue, 20 years, five Pac-10 titles. The Bruins were not real successful last couple of seasons, and Toledo has really had to. You know, I don't really want to say rebuild, but maybe well, reload and reorganize. Well, one thing that I like that he did is he got these guys organized. He asked them all individually how they could become a better football team. One was the weight room. A little more scheduling, a little more hard work in the weight room, and I think it's paying off for him. Brock Cure calls another timeout. I think with the new personnel in right now, Washington does not have all their ducks in a row, so to speak. Five touchdowns. And uh, Corey Dillon gets the rest of the afternoon off. The shoulder pads are back on. He had iced that right shoulder. 198 yards, 145 on the ground. And he was on pace, Sonny, to break that record that he set a few weeks ago as far as carries in a game. He had 36 earlier. I'm sure he finished right around 30. Anticipating a big matchup with Skip Hicks, who was leading the conference coming into the game and having eight touchdowns himself for the year. Yeah, and Hicks did not have a big afternoon, so that means that Corey Dillon, barring a huge effort from somewhere else in the Pac-10, be the conference's leading rusher going into next week's game down in Eugene. Husky band showing their spirit. Feeling a little bit better this week than they did after last week's trek with Notre Dame. Beautiful looking tie. Look at that thing. I don't think he's one of the current fans. He likes to be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, as Heward goes back to the sideline for Jarzinka, it's incomplete. There's a look at Skip Hicks. 33 carries for Dillon. And Hicks, who came in averaging 101 yards. Dillon, on the other hand, came in at 100 yards per game. Eight yards on seven carries. Improved at one point there in the third quarter. He was minus one. Nick Taronis for his second effort. His last one was an end over end job. This one not much better. Though he does not get the roll that he had. This one does dribble down to the 42 yard line. Washington has got to solve this problem, Sonny. I mean, I know it. We're kind of having fun with this, but for Jim Lambright and his staff, it's serious business. They have not been able to find a consistent punter in the last couple of seasons. That's true, and the, it's not very good for us. Jeff Prince, let's say, as a starter coming in, having all these other guys during the season get a tryout, so to speak. It's really tough on your own confidence level, and then you go out and punt a couple of times, and you're taken out for somebody else. I think that's Very tough situation. I think that's why you saw Lambright earlier on just a, an extra point with the concern on his face in and out of the hands of Eric Scott, which incomplete. And with Steve Buck at the helm, UCLA at second down at 10. Lambright, I mean, you, Washington had just scored to make it 40 to 14. Extra point team was on. Everybody else was high fiving and having a great exactly. time on the sideline. And there's Lambright still glaring out at his extra point team because he knows, and, and good coaches will tell you that sooner or later in the course of a season, your kicking game is going to win you a football game, whether it's a punt or a field goal. And I guess the flip side of that, as Ryan Rock couldn't hold on to it, 
The flip side of that, Sonny, is your kicking game can also lose you a game along the way. When we go back to the Arizona State game, not that that was the real reason the Huskies didn't come away with a victory, but there was a shame fun towards the end, giving Arizona State great field position. The luxury, of course, of today's game is the fact that at 41 to 14, for the most part, the special teams have been very good for Washington, especially the returns. The returns have been outstanding, but incomplete. incomplete. And it will bring up fourth down and ten. Jarzenka with a big kickoff return. Pathon with that 60 yarder to open the game. And then he had a 38 yard punt return as well. A lot of guys seen a lot of time here. Kurt Connell there, 55, getting some experience under his belt. Goes down. You got to give him a couple of yards. Jones had a busy day, very productive day. Just catch interference, five yard variety against the kicking team. <laughs> First down. I like that. Bill Richards in the referee. That's the five yard variety. When you're surfing on the web, make sure you. Pull in at this home page. The digital doghouse. www.washington.edu slash husky sports. Tom Linarelli will run things now. Sort of. Flags go down before the snap is fumbled. Full start on the offense. There's a look at Linarelli. Linarelli and Petro Kessy, 55 the center. Jason Harris. Is the tailback. This is Harris straight ahead. He'll pick up about five yards. Three and a half minutes left in this game. Big comeback for the Huskies today, though, Rich. I mean, the fans, everybody's starting to doubt Coach Lambright, the program, the whole. Deal and uh, they came out and proved to them and to the fans that uh, hard work and turn around. Well, I don't think you can understate you know, as Terry Holloman is stopped. I don't think you can understate how well Notre Dame played last week. There were many locals and many in the national media. When I got back to Chicago, many of the Chicago press felt that was the best that Notre Dame had played in a long time. I heard the same thing from fans up by the press box here where we were, that they couldn't believe how well they were playing. And obviously, the Irish suffered a huge letdown today. If you haven't heard, well, obviously, <laughs> at the time you're watching this, unless you've been in a cave, you know that Notre Dame was upset in overtime by Air Force who is a good team this year but man that's a real eye opener flags go down Jason Harris goes down under a pile of Bruins the penalty Illegal block against Washington. The illegal crackback block. The penalties declined. Fourth down. UCLA will decline the penalty. And so Washington will be forced to punt. And Nick Taronis 
They'll punt it away. The coaches eye in this action, Rich. All the Husky coaches eye in this punt. Not a real good one. Tryouts Monday. But Washington with this one in the bag, 41 14. Welcome back, 41 14. Washington on top of UCLA with a minute and a half left. Most of the drama in this one has been on its way home. But Steve Buck, who is out to run the offense with a nice completion, and UCLA is down to the 11 yard line. Very nice play here to Todd McBride downfield. Look how high the ball laid right out there. Good catch. Great grab of King Weatherspoon not being able to knock it away. There's a look at McBride. He's just a sophomore. Bob Toledo, as we've talked about, has a lot of youth on this team. A lot of talent. And hopefully he'll get to make his own schedule this year. He doesn't have to go to Tennessee and to Michigan in the same season. That's tough. Man. That's 106,000 people at both stadiums. Buck with time. And he's hit at the five yard line. Kai Bynum came up and delivered the hit. Boy, did that close quick. Mr. Buck thought he had an easy road to the end zone. <laughs> Kai Bynum there to tell him differently. Well, Buck has called another timeout. The Bruins have used up two now since they've had the ball down at the 12. And the only question left here is the final score. Jim Husky. Lambright and Nick Aliaga and the rest of it. You can see the rest of the defense, Sonny, is oh, right up there. That. He smiles. Yeah, but but the rest of the defense, you saw there's Campbell and Aliaga. They don't want this <laughs> bunch out there on the field right now, the reserves, to give up any points. I've seen it in years past, Rich, where they have done the same thing. All the starters come back on the field. Yeah. <laughs> well, only the starters are going to come back on the field, but the starters are sure anxious to see if the reserves can hold. Buck, he will score. UCLA sticks it in the end zone with a minute 18 left. Steve Buck, that's got to feel good for a reserve quarterback. The sophomore to come off the bench. Did it with the run here, but I tell you, it was that big throw he had down to McBride. Look at that big, lanky old guy get in there. Whew. That is a good feeling, even though you're getting your tails whipped a little bit out here. He's coming in to make a real positive. Ball players never give up. Good job by Buck. Bjorn Merton with the extra point, and it's good. So the Bruins make it 41 21. And a score which is really not a, indicative of how lopsided this thing has been all day long. He's happy, isn't he? Got a, that's great. He may be the only guy smiling on the flight back to L.A. Bruins that we talked about Washington next week with Oregon and then the Huskies schedule kind of calms down a bit. But the Bruins who had a rugged schedule early on at Cal then they've got Stanford and Washington State at home and then on the road at Arizona and of course they finish with USC in the Rose Bowl. Bob Toledo and the Bruins I think it may take a year or two Sonny but I think he'll be successful in Los Angeles. Well the one thing he's got going for him you know we talked about the youth certainly but you've got a quarterback that's only a sophomore in Cade McNown. next year being all that experience of the junior coming in 
We'll find out. We'll be seeing him in the next couple of years. Onside kick. Is that Payton? It I is. Doubt it. it is. <laughs> Boy, that goes down. Payton on the hands team on the outside. <laughs> He's everywhere. He is. And he can hurt you from just about everywhere. Certainly a great guy to have on that hands squad. Taking the bounce in perfectly. Going against the grain here. Trying to pick up a few blocks. Good speed. <laughs> hey, Jerome Payton has been a lot of fun to watch today. Great pass tries and dives and receptions. It's a good way to cap it off today, Rich. Plus a penalty tacked on at the end. This is going to put the football down inside the 15 yard line. And so now. On the other side of the coin, the reserves for Washington, they would like to stick it in the end zone as well. Michael. Tom Ellie. So Linarelli is the quarterback. Although Washington, in all fairness, Lambright may just have them yes, go to are. one knee. They are. They have a safety back there. Yes. About 10 yards. He's going to go down and eat the clock up. <laughs> the crowd wants him to score. <laughs> yeah, the fans that have stuck around. But look at Lambright. He knows. That's a good call. And UCLA with one timeout aren't even bothered about trying to call that. Yep, and you can see. I mean, there's no reason when you're up 41 to 21 to raise the uh, blood pressure of Bob Toledo. Yeah, you don't want any. Locker room banner for next season up there. Not at all. We saw Lou Holtz do this last week as well with Notre Dame when the Irish were close late, had a chance to add another touchdown. They didn't. Jim Lambright and the Washington Huskies impressively dispatch of UCLA bouncing back. From a huge defeat on the road last week, they come home and more than take care of business. The Huskies are now four and two, three and one in the conference. They beat UCLA 41-21.